Crumley and Robinson, the setbacks of the I formation. Kimball, quick pitch, fumble, loose ball, running around at the 10-yard line, scramble, still, now the Aztecs recover. Penrose, back to pass, sets up, fires to the end zone for Ferguson, touchdown Aztecs! Penrose on the option. Pitches back to Reedy, trying to turn the corner. Does 20. He's at the 15, the 10, the 5. Goes in. Touchdown, Aztecs. Hands off up the middle. Kramer, 10, 15. Bumps it his own end. Breaks away. He's at the 20, 25. are the 1974 San Diego State Aztecs. The 74 Aztecs once again had a fine year under second-year head coach Claude Gilbert, providing a mark of eight wins, only two losses, and one tie. They captured the PCAA championship for the third straight season, and in doing so, gave Gilbert a two-year mark of 17 wins, three losses, and two ties. The 74 Aztecs presented a high-powered offensive attack they finished eighth nationally in total offense, rolling up an average of 411 yards a game. And it was a balanced attack made potent by talented individuals. Focal point of the Aztec passing game was number 89, all-coast receiver Dwight McDonald. Senior out of Kearney High School, Dwight transferred to San Diego State from USIU. And in his only Aztec season, he was the nation's leading receiver. Among his 86 catches was his 58-yard bomb that started the Aztecs toward a 28-25 win over Tampa. His 86 catches, also an Aztec record, breaking the old mark of 85 set by Tim Delaney back in 1969. Excellent moves and fine hands were two of McDonald's big assets. Another was his ability to run with the ball after making the catch. Dwight was one of only two players in the country to gain more than 1,000 yards receiving. McDonald's fine open field moves are displayed in this scoring play against Bowling Green, which helped the Aztecs to a 21-21 tie. McDonald teamed with number 19, Nate Ferguson, to form a potent wide receiving tandem. They helped make the Aztecs the third best passing team in the nation. Dwight's importance to the Aztec attack was reflected in his being named the team's most valuable player in 1974. While most of McDonald's receptions were medium range, Ferguson, a senior from Merced, was often utilized as a deep threat. Nate caught 42 passes in 74, ranking him 21st nationally. And many were of the long range variety, like this 45 yarder against Bowling Green. Nate's season totals were rather remarkable because he played half the year with a broken wrist. Backup quarterback Kevin Sneed hooked up with Nate on the longest reception of the year, a 66-yard TD pass early in the year in a win over Tampa. Before breaking his wrist, Ferguson added another dimension to the Aztec offense when he himself turned passer. With the pass off the lateral, having fooled everyone, Nate hits wide open Dwight McDonald, the Aztecs' only touchdown, a disappointing loss over at Arizona, the season opener. Nate repeated that effort on a crucial turning point play against San Jose State, this time hitting tight end Tim Thorne on a 63-yard scoring play to propel the Aztecs to a big 40-14 conference victory. Thorne was the Aztecs' most versatile player. He set school records for number of punts and punting yardage in a career. After two seasons as a running back, Tim was converted to tight end in his senior year. And he caught 13 passes on the season, including this wide open 11-yarder and a 35-14 win over New Mexico State. And in goal line situations, Thorne went back to his old running back spot and scored five touchdowns on short blasts.
But guiding the 74 Aztec offense was junior quarterback Craig Penrose, number 13. A transfer from Colorado, Penrose started the year slowly. But he came on strongly in the second half of the season and finished the year as the nation's seventh ranked passer. On the campaign, Penrose completed 56% of his passes for 1,680 yards. All in all, Craig threw 10 touchdown passes, including this 25-yarder to McDonald in a 34-6 win over Utah State. Craig also kept defenses honest by occasionally running himself as one option in the Aztec beer offense. His 10-yarder sealed the 40-14 win over San Jose State. But usually, the Aztec ground game was left to a fine array of running backs. Heading the list, number 31, Billy Kramer, only five feet eight, but a tough, gutty runner. Kramer combined surprising shiftiness and balance with a kind of determination that often necessitated a whole army of tacklers to bring him down. Kramer chalked up 905 yards on the season, becoming the first Aztec ball carrier nine years to go over 900 yards. In a two-year Aztec career, he averaged over six and a half yards a carry. Kramer shows off all his running talents, quickness, balance, shiftiness, and tremendous desire in this phenomenal and remarkable 65-yard touchdown run against Long Beach State, sparking the Aztecs to a 27-17 victory. Kramer's running mate backfield was number 21, Monty Reedy, a junior from Bakersfield. Although he didn't start until the fifth game of the year, Reedy still gained over 600 yards. Here he follows Kramer's excellent block and turns the corner for 41 yards in the Aztecs' 37-9 romp over UOP. On a near duplicate play, Reedy uses Frank Geary's clearing block to go 22 yards for a touchdown in the victory over San Jose. Reedy scored nine touchdowns on the year to lead the Aztecs in that category. Monty also returned kicks, and they came up with the Aztecs' longest kickoff return of the year, a 60-yarder starting San Diego State with a big come from behind win over Long Beach State. The Aztecs had great depth in their running back core. Several players made contributions. Number 32, Frank Geary, gained 100 yards in the Aztecs' opening game loss to Arizona and was a starter until injured early in the campaign. Here, Frank refuses to go down as he scores on an eight-yarder against Tampa in the home opener. Bill Fudge, a junior from Lakeside, transfer from USC, averaged four and a half yards a carry in spot duty and exhibits his running power on this scoring run against Long Beach. Another good runner, number 34, Ollie Brown. The San Diego sophomore out of Morris High also averaged better than four yards a carry. The top effort in 74 was a 34-yard run, setting up a TD in the Aztecs' narrow 24-21 win over Fresno State. But a very important part of the Aztec offense was the foot of number 43, Benny Ricardo. Benny set several kicking records in his Aztec career, including a 47-yard field goal against Texas El Paso, longest in San Diego State history. It was one of four field goals he kicked in that game, another record. Though Benny was not needed in the clutch as often this past year as he was in 1973, he did hit this 27-yarder late in the game to give the Aztecs a tie with Bowling Green. It was one of 10 field goals he kicked during the year, and one of 18 in his career, both Aztec records. 
Ricardo, a native of Paraguay, scored 62 points in the season, making him the top Aztec scorer. The success of any offense, of course, rests with the quality of the offensive line, and the 74 Aztecs had a good one. Heading the offensive line, number 73, Tony Bachman, top pro prospect, three-time all-conference selection. Junior Charlie Wartiska started the other guard spot. The tackles, 76, Alex Cota, Ira Wadley, and Jim Chandler. And anchoring the line, center Bob Johnson. The potent Aztec beer offense, guided in 1974 by line coach Otto Kopler. Ollie Matson handled the running back. And coordinating the offense, quarterbacks and receivers, coach Ted Toner. Coordinating the defensive strategy was defensive backfield coach Ernie Zampezi. Ably assisted by Donnie Ray on the left and Kenny Madison, along with Al Hammerschmidt. The 74 Aztec defense was challenged by an outstanding collection of opposing running backs. Perhaps no team in the country faced such a formidable stable of runners. This group included three-time 1,000-yard rusher Willard Harrell of Pacific, Jim Upchurch of Arizona, twice over 1,000 yards, 1,400-yard rusher Dave Preston of Bowling Green, Louis Jamona of Utah State, the national rushing champion. And there was Tampa quarterback Freddie Solomon, a 1,300-yard runner and standout in three postseason All-Star games. And the Aztec defensive alignment, the key to stopping the opponent, rests with the linebackers. The Aztecs had a strong core in 74. Leading the way, 58, Bobby Henderson, a senior from Los Angeles. Bobby was all-conference both years at San Diego State and the acknowledged defensive leader. He led the team in interceptions in 73, but Aztec opponents were more ground-oriented in 74. Bobby had but one interception, the season opener at Arizona. Nevertheless, Henderson was the runaway leader in defensive statistics in both of his Aztec seasons. The Aztecs got good play on the outside from 59, Bruce Augra. Clears the way here for a tackle by Henderson. Augra, a senior from Bakersfield, was a junior college running back became a standout outside linebacker for the Aztecs the last two years. And the other outside spot, 63, Burt Blackwell, a senior from Atherton, came on strong in his final campaign. Blackwell, blitzing from the outside, sacks the New Mexico State quarterback. Against UOP, Burt picks off a pass and makes like a running back. The Aztecs had several players who stood out at linebacker in 74. Ball players like number 60, Mao Kalati, a junior from Garden Grove. 56, junior Walt Justice from Torrance. And 42, sophomore Travis Hitt out of Grossmont High. The Aztecs had another big, fast defensive line in 74. The highly touted Mike Gilbert was the mainstay. The San Jose State game was a particularly memorable one for Mike Gilbert. It was absolutely devastating. In fact, he was everywhere, harassing, sacking, and generally making life miserable for San Jose State quarterback Craig Kimball. In that ball game, Gilbert set an Aztec record for defensive points with seven unassisted tackles, four quarterback sacks, two pass deflections, and 19 pass rushes. Gilbert capped this unbelievable performance by recovering a fumble at the San Jose State five-yard line to set up an easy touchdown for San Diego State. Another new defensive lineman, number 99, Greg, too strong boy, a junior from Fresno. Boyd played very well in the Aztecs' win over Fresno State. Mike McMeal, number 70, excelled in his only year of Aztec football. Forced to sit out two years because of a heart problem, Mike shows his stuff here by sacking the Texas El Paso quarterback. Senior Mark Sims, number 84, earned all-conference mention as a defensive end. Three-year performer Alan Cookie Monster Thompson was tough once again. As was defensive lineman Dan Meske. Top man in the Aztec defensive secondary was number 22, all-star cornerback Monty Jackson. 
Although opponents rarely threw in his direction, Bonnie still led the Aztecs with six interceptions, nearly all of them coming at crucial times, and nearly all of them resulting in long runbacks. Jackson picks off this one against New Mexico State and brings it all the way back. Coming up with this interception against Long Beach State preserved an Aztec victory. Bonnie runs it back for 50 yards. Ed Curtell, a transfer from Colorado, moved in at the strong safety position. He picked off three passes, but Ed must have experienced some sort of stage fright at San Diego Stadium because all of his interceptions were on the road, including this one, the 26-12 win over Texas El Paso. Winston Sharp, who transferred to the Aztecs from USD, was a good performer at cornerback. But he was better known for a specialty, block kicks. This one in the last minute against Bowling Green preserved a tie. In all, Winston had four key block kicks in 74. Number 20, free safety Rance Olison, known to his teammates as the Howland. A senior from Arkansas, Rance derives his nickname from his hard-hitting style of play. After one of his typically crunching tackles, Rance would usually taunt and berate an opponent, and thus the nickname Howland. Nineteen seventy-four, another football season in which Aztec fans can take justifiable pride, and at the same time wonder why year after year the Aztecs are snubbed by bowl committees. Coach Claude Gilbert can only look to the future and hope that nineteen seventy-five. We'll find the Aztecs at last on the road to a postseason bowl game. The Aztecs nailed in this drive with three penalties, two 15s and a five. That's 35 yards. Third and 36. Definitely a tough first down. Well, I think they should be thinking in terms of getting it out to midfield where they can get a good punt and put those put San Jose into a, a poor field position. It's when you try to make first downs in this situation, oftentimes you get into big trouble. Penrose on third down, back to pass. Fires to Ferguson, who's going to throw a pass. Throwing long for Tim Thorne. He's got triple coverage, but he catches it. At the 12, the 10, he's running loose at the 5, and gets down to the 1, touchdown, Aztecs. 